The city of Baltimore, Maryland is a place filled with promise and potential, plagued by poverty, unemployment, and political decisions that benefit business developers at the expense of working class taxpayers. Baltimore was thrust into the spotlight last summer after protests erupted in response to the death of Freddie Gray, a black man who died after suffering injuries in police custody. Many of the people protesting never knew Freddie Gray personally, but protested because their experiences of growing up in Baltimore were far too common with the deceased. Ajamu Baraka, the Green Party vice presidential candidate, spent nearly a week here in Baltimore, visiting local community members in their neighborhoods, sleeping in with the homeless, doing things unconventional for any presidential candidate from any party. After an in-studio interview here at The Real News, Ajamu agreed to let our cameras follow him as he visited a local barber shop before attending a Green Party campaign event later that evening. So we went with Ajamu as he met with local residents that talked about the plight of what it means to grow up black and in Baltimore. Ajamu Baraka was an honest man during our trip, saying that this wasn't about winning. This was more about bringing awareness and creating solutions to the problems that face the everyday people that the Green Party hopes to represent. So I, I wanted to, to do this, this kind of ride along and go to this barbershop for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, I'll be honest, most of the people uh, at this barbershop in this particular block is like kind of like, in a sense, a small black Wall Street in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Most of the people, I mean, a, a lot of the, the more conscious and older gentlemen on the block know who, know who you are from your previous works. Mm. The majority of the people don't know the Green Party yeah. and the block. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pronounce your name right. You got it, uh, brother. My name is Dwayne Green. A jump. A jump. Same here, brother. Same here. Same here. Good to see you. Wow. Shot time. Wow. Yes, sir. But I claim, wow. I claim the South now. South South? No, no, no. Oh, South? Down in Atlanta, Southern Georgia. Southern United States? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. A pleasure. I left in 71, <laughs> but I've been South for well, a long, long time. I was born in 72, time. so when you started, I was in nothing. Uh, yeah, I was in yeah. anything about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I started about it in 72. <coughs> yeah. But I'm just, just trying to break the ice. Yeah. I appreciate it. This is my friend. Yeah, he come on my house, take his brother. shoes off, and go to my refrigerator, cook turkey bacon in it. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Cool. He's doing so well, well. It's Baltimore. We've been Baltimore. A job. Yeah, I just heard that. Yeah, I just heard that. Real room. Yeah. Welcome. Make yourself at home. Relax. If you need anything, let me know. Okay. I'm here to serve you and make you stay pleasant. I got a question for you real quick before you go. I'm about to get out of here now. Excuse me. Thank you. What's one of your missions right now as far as uh, seeing the youth win in the community? We got to bring attention to the fact that our youth is suffering. There basically ain't no jobs here. In Baltimore, Chicago, Detroit, it's the same situation. But yet you got all these politicians who have all these plans. They talk about how they're going to you know, generate jobs. You got Donald Trump talking about he's going to generate 25 million jobs, but they're all planned. You're the only black candidate out of all four parties. <laughs> right. Uh, but you also are probably like not the black candidate that everyone expected. Um, so uh, talk to me a little bit about, or talk to us a little bit about like where you were born, your uprising, uh, your upbringing. Uh, who is a Jamu Baraka? Hmm. Well, I guess my, my upbringing was in fact sort of an uprising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was born in, in, in Chicago. Well, I was born in Indiana, but I, I, raised, I was raised on the south side of Chicago. Mm. Um, at a time when there was a lot of, of political upheaval. Mm -hmm. You know, when I became a teenager, that's when uh, the Panther Party, uh, under the leadership of Fred Hampton, was uh, beginning to make its mark. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though some of us, you know, were too, too, too much of knuckleheads to go into the party at that time, uh, we, we, we heard the message. Mm -hmm. uh, and we understood or, or began to understand what our responsibilities should be to the communities. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was one of my early uh, influences. Uh, ended up, though, um, being caught up in the last part of the uh, Vietnam conflicts uh, draft mm -hmm. and ended up in the military and stationed in Germany. <clears throat> when I got out the military, went south uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to organize and to be part of the ongoing movement.
mm -hmm. uh, for radical social change uh, in this country and really around the world. So, you know, I, my whole life has been a, a life of activism, a struggle, mm -hmm. of attempting to try to, uh, in the best traditions of our people, to, in essence, serve our folks. Jamal Baraka, good to meet you, brother. What's your name? That's it, Rayquan Wood. Rayquan, good to meet you, brother. Good meet you. Kenny. Vice President. Vice Kennedy. Yes, sir. Kennedy Ajamo. Ajamo. Good to meet you, bro. Good to meet you. How you doing, brother? I'm with the green part. I know y'all ain't never heard of that, but that's all right. We're making our mark. I ain't never known nobody to run from that. Well, you were running now. How you doing, brother? So, this is Rio. Rio uh, just came home a couple years ago. How, how long did you do? Five years. You did five years? I did five years in prison. Did you? Are you able to vote now? Yes, I can vote now. You registered? I'm already registered. All right. So who are you planning on voting for? I don't know yet, yo. I don't trust nobody. <laughs> Man, honest, yo. They think they're doing all that goofy stuff, and I ain't really with it. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, so, so what is what is a good reason for him to vote for you? I can tell you. I can tell you a good reason why he should. Uh, Vice President, Green Party. I can tell you a good reason why he should be active. And if you're doing things in the community, and if he wants to vote, that's good. See, we out here just talking about voting for me. Mm. We we using this campaign to talk about why we got to get organized, why we got to build movement. Cause this ain't about just no politicians. Look, we see what politicians do. We got all these black faces behind fake places here in Baltimore, and what's the consequence? They selling out the, the communities to white folks with money. You know, so if we are not able to control these politicians and control our own politics, then uh, ain't nothing happening. Okay. I'm my brother. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, yeah. Right, take it easy. Glad to be there. Six. All right, we'll just peek into City of Gods, which is black-owned clothing store. It's the biggest local clothing store in Baltimore, and then. Uh, we can keep <coughs> popping and get the margarita. But like I said, all these are black owned businesses. It's closed today, but this is all this. But if you look at this building in particular in Baltimore City, so they consider this a historical, historical neighborhood. Uh -huh. So even though this building has been, has, it's fallen down because of time and lack of upkeep by slumlords, they won't let you knock it down mm. or build anything on top. So it'll just sit here in infestation. It's where sometimes you'll find a dead body in the back. Wow. But just, this will be here, right? Like, businesses around it are black owned because of these, you know, stupid laws, or they mm. want a developer to come by it. This is what sits here. Mm. What about, uh, what about the uh, land trust? Like, you know, where the, where the community can buy some of these properties. Are people d involved in any kind of that kind of uh, so, creative way to try to get some of this property? I don't know that answer, but I'll tell you, the market right here, Baltimore is known for their street markets. Mm -hmm. Kevin Plink's brother, Kevin Plink owns Under Armour. His brother just bought the market and all these buildings in this neighborhood. <coughs> okay. 52 buildings in particular. But this, but this block right here is a safe haven. There's no violence that ever happens on this block. Mm. No, no fights, no, I mean fights, but nobody dies. And this is one of the, a couple blocks up is one of the most dangerous neighborhoods wow. in the city. Wow. What's up, okay. fellas? What's up, man? <coughs> How y'all doing? How you doing? What's up, man? Come on. This is a John Mubaraka. This is Idris. He's one of the owners of the shop. Okay, I'm doing good, doing good. Glad to get a chance to see what y'all got here. <coughs> It looks nice, man. I really. How long y'all been here? Uh, seven years. Seven years? Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. That means that means you got a, a nice yeah, foothold. Really yeah, nice uh, clientele. And then we represent a stand for something too, so yeah. that always helps. Yeah. We yeah. got more stand power. Well, actually, what's yeah. it called again? When people see that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. People yeah. see that you represent and stand for something. Yeah. 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 Good to see you, brother. A Ajamo Baraka. All right, we're Philly. Well, I work here at the City of God shop with. Me. One of the, another one of the owners. Okay, brother. Yeah. Ajama. Ajama, Ajama. good to meet you, brother. Yeah. How you doing, brother? I'm fine. Ajama. Quinn. Quinn, Quinn. Quinn. Yeah. Okay. So you running with Jill, right? Mr. Jill Stein. Stein, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, like, what's, what's separating the Green Party from the rest of, you know, the, the other candidates that's running? Like, 
what's, what's separate? I mean, outside of the big guys like Democrats and Republicans, because you know they, they making everything a two party thing. But you guys out there, people don't even know about you guys. Exactly. You know what I'm so, what's this, what's going to separate the Green Party? Because I think the last time I voted was in 2000. Actually, Barack Obama when he got in office, and I, but I voted 2008. For yeah. That was 08, right? Yeah, yeah. So I voted for Cynthia McKinney. Like, McKinley, I think she was running. In 2000, yeah, 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 yeah. You feel me? So I was Friend of mine. Her, you know, yeah. I like what she was, what she was standing on, right. but she faced a lot of opposition after. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So like, what's going to stop you guys from, from getting pushed out of there? Well, we're facing the same kind of opposition, even more so, because this time they're really scared of us. Because, you know, they, they see that their they're people are looking for change. So the Green Party is about change. It, it's, the Green Party is saying we recognize that we can't have politics as usual. And so we're talking about we've got to build a new social movement. Because, look, we can't deal with the conditions we see around this country with the same old politics. And because we're talking about doing some new stuff, like really trying to do something for the economy where we can put some real money in these urban areas, we talk about we've got to have real uh, educational reform so that we can really be producing healthy people as opposed to, you know, shutting down public education. We talk about we've got to have health care for everybody. You know, you know, people don't want that kind of message to get out. So they are, they are targeting the party right now. That's why they won't let us in, in the uh, debates. That's you know. crazy. So, like, <clears throat> but I thought the debates was open to all parties. No, no, you have a... A, a, a corporation right. that's run by the Democrats and the Republicans, and they determine who can be in the debates. Right. And they don't want the uh, Green Party to be in that debate because they don't want us to talk about why we got to have social change here in this country. Right. They don't want us to talk about why we need to uh, uh, get out of these, these permanent wars where we send the young people off here to, right. to fight and die for, uh, for the 1%. Right. You know? They don't want us to talk about you know, why we still got mass incarceration here in this country. Or why we got so many black folks who can't get a job because right now there ain't no jobs. What does the Green Party winning this election represent uh, for the unheard in America? It would represent that they have, there had been some profound changes mm -hmm. if Jill Stein and myself win the election. Mm -hmm. So it would mean that uh, the, the people of this country are prepared for uh, and willing to suffer and struggle for real change. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the difference is that uh, Obama had no uh, change agenda. Mm -hmm. He used the rhetoric of change in order to win office, mm -hmm. but his agenda was already set. Mm -hmm. He was selected uh, some years ago as an individual who had talent uh, uh, and who was completely ideologically committed mm -hmm. to the status quo, to the the interests of the one percent that really run things here in this country. Mm. So, you know, they didn't mind giving us the symbolism of of, of a white man, of a, of a, of a, a brother in the White House. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's all it was. It was symbolism. It was to uh, to keep us ideologically committed to a system and to a government and to a society that was uh, fundamentally organized uh, against us. Mm. Uh, so it was it was meant to confuse <coughs> us and. Uh, Obama uh, was wildly successful in doing that mm -hmm. because the, the ideological consolidation of, of black consciousness, that is the uh, identification uh, with this, this oppressive system on the part of black folks, resulted in this weird situation where even at the height of the economic crisis, mm -hmm. where everybody was suffering and upset, the one group that was the most positive but yet was suffering the most was black folks. Mm. So there's a, this complete disconnect between our lived realities mm -hmm. and our subjective consciousness, mm -hmm. you know? So that is the consequence of, of propaganda, the consequence of uh, the manipulation of symbols, mm -hmm. the consequence of a, of, a, of a distorted consciousness. And that was the job that was assigned to uh, Barack Hussein Obama. So we'll be fine. In your time, but right now it's a state of emergency. Free our minds.